Welcome back. On this week's episode, we're going to get back to work on the Chevy truck behind me. We've also got a truck on the other side of the shop that the students got wrapped up and it's ready to go back to the customer. We also got more engine work done on the replacement engine for the Honda Civic. But on the 48 engine with the crankshaft securely in place, the students got busy installing new camshaft barracks. Uh, so next week we should be starting to put the pistons back in, get the oil pan on it, and get the bottom end wrapped up. I'd also like to add that if you're watching these episodes on your phone, you're not doing the show any justice. Uh, you're going to want to use a computer screen or better yet your television. I found out from one of my seven-year-old twins recently that I was able to do that. Uh, so we've been watching them on television at home. Uh, not to boost my own ego, but to let me see what I'm actually producing so I can make the show even better. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that as well. The other thing I would encourage you to do is to please forward these uh, episodes along. I like to get the viewership up. Uh, I'll never understand how someone balancing a broom can get millions and millions of views, but yet we've got young people here diagnosing and repairing vehicles, uh, and we don't have uh, the viewership that I think we should have. Uh, these young people, especially now more than ever, deserve our attention and our support. Uh, so again, I would appreciate you forwarding these uh, on to people who might be interested in them. We want to thank Mr. Goss from Tonico for supplying the gasket kit for the 48 Chevy build. We're using a cam bearing tool to knock out the cam bearing. By holding the end of the tool with a wrench and twisting the shaft, they're able to tighten and secure the tool inside of the cam bearing. Now they loosen it so that they can remove the bearing from the tool. This process continues until they're all out. To get the last cam bearing out, we need to push out the core plug first. We had to add an extension to get the last bearing. Not only is it important to make sure that you have the correct tool when removing and installing the new cam bearings, but what's extremely important is making sure that they go in correctly uh, in two different ways. Uh, first, they go in in a certain order. Each one of the bearing inside diameters is different, uh, so you need to make sure that they go in the correct order or else the camshaft won't go in. But what's just as important or maybe more important is that these holes here that are in the cam bearings themselves have to be put in in such a way that these holes line up with the holes that are in the journals themselves. Uh, that's how oil gets fed from the bottom of the block up through the head and everywhere else. So if we put the bearing in just anywhere we want, the oil will never feed. And uh, the cam, not only will the cam starve at this point, uh, but it also won't uh, reach the top of the engine. Here you can see the holes in the block that feed the oil through the journal and through the bearing uh, to feed the upper half of the engine. You can see we've got the new bearing on our cam bearing driver. Uh, we're going to make sure that that opening there is at 12 o'clock. And that's going to line up the second hole with the other hole that's in the block itself. The boss where the screwdriver is pointing is the oil passage uh, for the cam bearing. So what we're going to do, since we, don't, we can't see this while we're putting it in on the end, what we're going to do is mark the end of the hole. 
So that right there is where it is, where the oil passage is. So we've got that set so that when he puts the bearing in, he'll line that hole up uh, with that mark that we've made, and then it will be able to feed oil through the journal. You can see by our mark that we're pretty much spot on with the oval and the bearing, so we should be feeding oil perfectly. This truck belongs to our principal, Mr. Cassidy. Came in a year ago last fall. Uh, it was a perfectly running driving vehicle, but it was pretty much leaking oil from every gasket and seal on the engine. So he asked us to pull the engine out, get everything sealed up good, painted and put back in. So that's what the students last year did. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in March, we were all shut down, so we never got the chance to complete it. Uh, the students now took over a couple weeks ago and started finalizing this thing and got it all back together, or the rest of it anyway. Uh, and then we came up with an interesting no crank problem that the students uh, had to figure out. And uh, they did a really good job using wiring diagrams and some old school diagnostics. Uh, and figured it out and actually fixed it better than the way it originally was. With all the work done in this truck, the solenoid wire has come up missing. After reviewing the wiring diagrams, we determined that the wire has come from this butt connector. We're using a test light to determine if we have power on crank. Okay, go ahead crank it, Dylan. Now we're going to run a new wire to the starter solenoid. We're soldering on an eyelet for the starter solenoid. Since crimping the ends is unacceptable, we remove the plastic to solder it directly. Now we'll add the heat shrink. Someone used the crimp connector on the solenoid wire. We're hard wiring it back together. Alejandro's tinning the wires before putting them together. With the wire connected, I'm going to bump the solder to make sure it engages. I'm here with Jonah Smith, one of my Auto 3 students. As you know, in the last couple of months or so, he's been working pretty hard on that Kawasaki that he's got inside the shop. Uh, but he's uh, just recently acquired uh, another acquisition. I'm going to let him tell you all about it. I currently work in a motorcycle shop, Moto Member Manassas in Manassas, Virginia. I was on delivery for a gentleman's 2020 Honda Goldwing, and if any of you know anything about those bikes, they have very many features on them. So I went over the features with him uh, to make him feel more comfortable with the bike, and sitting in his garage he had this, a 1983 Honda CB1000 Custom. I guess as you could say as a tip, I, he pretty much um, gave me this uh, beautiful bike here. So I plan on riding it for a lot while longer uh, while I finish that Kawasaki in the shop. We brought this truck in a couple of weeks ago, and if you recall, Mr. Freeman stopped by one night to uh, help us diagnose it. The original complaint was an upshift issue from second to third gear, as well as an intermittent no crank. Um, both happened at the same time, so we assumed they were related, and we found out that they were. The power feed wire that feeds the ignition switch from the fuse box was burned up, um, so uh, the students took care of that, and then that, in turn, took care of the shifting problem. So that's what you're going to see them take care of right now. In order to diagnose the ignition switch, the lower dash and steering column clamshell is removed. After some of the diagnosing you saw in a past episode, this is what we found. With the burnt terminal in the fuse box, we're going to bypass that and put in an inline fuse. We'll be able to power the ignition switch with this uh, rather than going through the connector, which it would probably end up fouling again pretty quickly. The students start by cutting the wire from the foul terminal. And we're going to pull it through and solder it to our inline fuse. The fuse connectors go back in place and then the fuse box goes back down before installing our fuse link.
With the ignition power problem fixed, we're putting the dash back together. Now it's time for a test drive. We're hooking up the wiring harness to the replacement engine. We're transferring the exhaust manifold to the replacement engine. I'm cleaning the surface for the exhaust manifold. I'm using one of the red discs to clean this surface because it's aluminum. When the surface is clean and a new gasket, we're putting the exhaust manifold back on. I'm torquing the exhaust manifold to 25 foot pounds. Now I'm installing the oxygen sensor. I'm using an O2 socket to tighten the sensor. Next time on Bulldog Builds, with the Chevy truck cranking, hopefully we'll have it started. We'll have more of the parts from the Honda Civic transferred over and back into the car. And hopefully we'll have the last piece of the Harley painted and back on the bike. See you next week.